this is for refer uh, refer for all the uh Cholim, uh, Israel and for Hashem's protection for the armed forces and security forces of, of Israel. Okay. Um okay, next thing is actually the last thing here. Um let's actually go back just a few more steps because it'll be only be about a minute or two. So just just to repeat what uh what what one must do what one what must one do to uh, to observe the holiness of tefillin so it says here firstly you need to have a clean body you need to go to the toilet first remove the waste from your body and uh, if you need to let out a bad odor you take them off uh, because you're standing before the king and it's also not proper to eat and speak idle things when you when you when you're wearing them only for davening and uh because uh, they're holy art it's a holy holy it's a holy article and it says what care must be given to to fill in they must always be black and shiny not uh, and uh, if not have them over painted with that uh, black paint that looks like typics i can even i've got it in the other room i can even show it to you guys they, 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 the squareness must be intact okay what happens if what what should i do if they fall on the floor so this is, says this is a very serious thing. Um, while while if they fall while in their pouch, then you need to give something to charity. If they fall from your hand uncovered, then you should fast that day. If you're unable to fast, give charity and be repentant that whole day. Then the last thing of uh, that that we're going to cover out of this from this book. What, how about my wristwatch, my watch? Must I remove it to put it into Philip? If your watch is in the way of the straps, it must be removed. As a matter of fact, nothing must must be a, must be an obstacle between the tefillin and your body. And now I will end by asking you a question. Do you know that all I've told you about tefillin is part of an ancient tradition handed down from father to son? Along the ages from the days when we went out of Egypt and arrived and the Torah at Mount Sinai through Moshe Rabbeinu. So, and it says here, um, it remains for me to, okay, okay, okay. It says, one must, uh, this is a wonderful mitzvah of putting on the field every day. So it's quite a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a very important uh, thing to do. Some people just put it on and say the Shema, and that's what, whatever level they are. And that uh, that's uh, some people do attribute a lot of importance to, to put it on Tefillin every day. The issues we never made any mistakes, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of a flaw. Okay, so. Again, uh, Rav's ruling and Rabba's ruling is that despair alone affects acquisition. The Gomorrahs come with different proofs uh, against that, and each time Rav has successfully defended the challenge. So there's another challenge. If one stole and then another thief came and stole it from the first thief, the first thief pays the twofold payment to the original owner, but the second thief pays only the principal alone. Um, and who is that principal paid uh, to, Gas? The original owner. No. No, no, the, the first thief. The first thief. The okay. first thief. So, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Just let me in on the other one. Thanks, Damon. Oh, sorry, I'm on my phone. I want to get off it. Okay. Tell me. Uh, uh, um, okay, you with me? All right. All right, guys, let's not have too many distractions. All right. So what happens is the second thief uh, pays only the principal to the first thief. So why doesn't he pay it to the original owner? So quite uh, quite clearly here, there's something called grammar, causative damage, which means he's only he wasn't the one that stole it from the original owner. So what causative damage... What's happened is him, the second thief, stealing it from the first thief has caused the first thief now to pay money and not return the original item to the owner. It's quite simple. 
So therefore, the second thief pays the principal only to the first thief. And um, there's also a factor, according to some opinions, why is only the principal paid? Well, the, the first reason is that a penalty is only paid for theft, but not for stealing. Okay? So, so there's a case where uh, it said he stole it from the first thief, meaning uh, at knife point or whatever the case may be. Therefore, he only owes the principal. And there are some opinions that say that uh, there wasn't despair that affected acquisition yet. And therefore, the, set, the first thief doesn't own it, so the second thief would only pay the principal, no twofold payment to the first thief. Okay? So uh, that's very, very straightforward. All right, let's, uh, let's go on quickly. If one stole and then sold the stolen animal, and then another thief came and stole it from the buyer, the first thief pays the four and fivefold payment, and the second thief pays the twofold payment, we already discussed why that is because uh, there was, uh, accordingly, this is an argument according, against Rav. This is the challenge because it's not just despair that affects acquisition. It would seem that despair in conjunction with a change of location from a thief's domain to a buyer's domain affects uh, acquisition. And therefore, in that particular case, the second pays twofold. The reason why the first pays twofold, sorry, pays fourfold or fivefold, is because um, that uh, there's a, it's known as habitual sinning in certain, um, according to Rav Sheshes and Rabbi Akiva, etc., where uh, it's only if you steal and then sell it or slaughter it, are you eligible for a fourfold, fivefold payment. Otherwise, as a thief, you're only eligible for twofold payment uh, for even an ox or a sheep, okay? So uh, then there was another case. This is the third case. If one stole and then slaughtered the stolen animal and another thief came and stole the slaughtered carcass from the first thief, the first thief pays the four or fivefold payment because we know that if the first if the thief sells, uh, sells or slaughters the animal, he's eligible to pay the four or fivefold payment because the act is irreversible as you know. And a physical change of selling the item is an irreversible act. So that's known as habitual sinning. And uh, the second thief does not pay the twofold payment, but only the principal uh, alone. Now, um, you, you should be asking yourself at this point why that would be. Because the very fact of it is we learn for a physical change which occurs when an animal is from a living state to a dead state, and that was caused by the first thief, he now owns the animal, so to speak. So therefore, since the thief owns the animal, the second thief should pay the first thief a twofold payment. So why does he only pay the principal? Okay, that, uh, that's how the question's going to do that. So what we're saying is here, yeah, is that we have to look at another uh, factor. The Bryce states at any rate in the middle case that if one stole and then sold the stolen animal and then another thief came and stole it from the buyer, the first thief pays the fourfold or fivefold payment and the second thief pays the twofold payment. Now, the Gemara asks the question, when did the thief sell it? If you will say that he sold it prior to the owner's despair, then why does the second thief who stole it from the buyer pay the twofold payment? Because why is there anybody who would say that a change of domain without the original despair effects acquisition? Certainly not. So a change of location on its own does not affect acquisition, which is coming to imply that um, the original owner has to despair of it in addition to a change of location. But again, this is an argument against Rav and Rubber because Rav and Rubber turn around and say, despair loan effects acquisition doesn't matter whether it is a change of location or not, which means that if the second thief stole from the first thief, there would still be eligibility to pay uh, the, the twofold payment according to certain uh, cases, providing the original owner despaired of it before the second thief started from the first thief. 
get what I'm saying. So that's why it's an argument against Rav. And if we have a look here, uh, it, it says, so it's obvious that the Bryce refers to where the first thief sold it after the original owner's despair. Okay. In which case, the owner's despair in conjunction with the subsequent change of domain affects the buyer's acquisition of the animal. That's according to Rashi. So the thief who stole it from the buyer has stolen it from the new owner and is liable to pay for the twofold payment. So again, that's an argument that despair affects acquisition on its own without a change of location. That's what was brought against Ralph. So if that's the case, the first, the Bryce states that the first thief is liable to the fourfold or fold payment for selling it, because we know for a slaughtering or selling of a thief, only then the fourfold or fivefold payment kicks in. Now, if it should enter your mind to say that despair alone affects acquisition, then why does the first thief pay the four or fivefold payment? Because it's his own animal that he's selling. So what it's actually saying here is that. Uh, the, the, the problem is, is that if despair alone affects acquisition, what would happen is that they wouldn't, Kev, mm. are you with me? They wouldn't I'm, just, yeah, I'm just looking up, yeah. Where yeah. The, uh, there wouldn't be a case. You see, in other words, the, only the principal, only the principal is paid uh, 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 from the second thief to the first thief, only the principal. So what it's what it's uh, saying here is if uh, if you've got a case where despair affects acquisition without a change of location, the second thief wouldn't only pay the principal, he'd pay the twofold payment because out of the despair he affects acquisition to the first thief, and therefore since he now owns it, so to speak, even though he has to also pay twofold penalty if he's uh, if he's caught because he hasn't yet sold it last by the way. Um, um, you will also have to pay that to the original buyer. But it's proof the fact that the second thief only pays the principal alone to the first thief, that despair alone does not affect acquisition and you need a change of location also. That's the proof against Ruff. Do you does everybody get that so far? No, okay, and then it's also saying you've got a problem because why does the first thief pay a four or five fold payment? Because firstly, if he sells it to the buyer uh, after the owner despairs, he shouldn't have to pay the four fold or five fold payment because he acquires it through the despair alone. And therefore, since it's his animal is selling, why doesn't he just pay the principal or two fold? payment to the original owner, why would there be two four or five-fold payments? Because he's selling his own animal. The original owner despaired. And it's the same thing as regards to slaughtering the animal. If the original owner despaired, but you can't take the case, the Gemara is using this case of the selling of the animal because the slaughtering of an animal is a different issue that comes into play. The minute there's a physical change, that automatically renders uh, a change of uh, ownership, such as slaughtering the animal. But when you're selling the animal, there's no real sale before despair takes place because you can't sell what's not yours. Does that make sense? Why? I'm the original owner. You want to sell what's mine. I haven't given it up in my head. You can't sell what hasn't been given up. So therefore, the sale, uh, the sale is null and void. So therefore, we're saying that it had to be a case in order to sell it to the buyer where despair occurred first. But if despair occurred first, why is there a full or fivefold payment? Because it was his animal, the thief, who acquired it through despair alone and then sold it to the buyer. So why does he have to pay a full or fivefold for an animal he acquired? Maybe the twofold he pays. But it's already became his at the point of despair. The four or five fold only comes in um, uh, after, after it's for selling or slaughtering. So again, this is a proof that it cannot be for despair alone because uh, then, uh, then he would not have to pay the four or five fold payment 
nor would the second thief have to pay the principal alone because the first thief would actually own it. Those are the two arguments against Ruff so far. Did you get it? There's also another, can I add something, Damon? Uh, there's sure. also another problem, then the four, fourth and fifth uh, uh, penalty would never ever kick in then. But there's no point mentioning it in the Torah then. Uh, well, that's exactly that's exactly the, the the point. No, it's only the point if you argue that despair loan effects acquisition. Yes, that's what I'm but, saying. Yes, but yes. not if, if it's in dispute. conjunction. Correct. Not if it's in conjunction with a physical change. No, but then, then, you're fine. then you're then you're fine. But then you don't need despair because a physical change alone is enough. That's number one. And number two. Uh, in other words, as Gavin said quite correctly, that despair doesn't do anything. Your physical change, it works on its own. Despair done, doesn't do anything. And if you're saying that in terms of selling the animal, despair alone doesn't work if it needs a change of location. So exactly, that's exactly, the Gemara is not bringing it only in this case. It's saying overall, but this seems to prove it. You get what I'm saying? So, um, we are dealing in this bright, so it's saying that, um, now let's see what we're actually coming uh, to deal with, okay? That we are dealing in this price so after the original owner's despair. In other words, what it's saying is, uh, if you look at the, at the Bryce's middle case, you know, um, that, um, in, what's the middle case is that, Somebody stole, the first thief stole the item. He then, uh, he then sold it to a buyer, and the second thief then bought, uh, stole it from the buyer. So in order that there's a twofold payment to the thief, um, they would have to, if you want to say that location doesn't count, you would have to say that the despair itself had kicked in. Okay. So the, the, the problem is it can't be because of the reasons that we mentioned below. So if, um, so if you're dealing with a case after the original owner's despair, and that's the case you're dealing with, it might enter your mind to say that despair alone affects acquisition, then why does the second thief pay only the principal? Rather yeah. do not learn from this, despair alone does not affect acquisition, and therefore, this poses a difficulty for Ruff. So you can't get around that so far. Exactly, Gavin. You can't, whichever way you look at it. So this seems like an argument against Ruff for two reasons. Four or five-fold payment is due, and if it's your animal you're selling or slaughtering, despair doesn't do anything. Because if you did own it as a result of the despair, why would you pay a four or five-fold payment for an animal you own? You can do with it what you want. Second thing is the second thief would pay a twofold payment uh, to the first thief uh, because you don't need a change of location. If the first, if the original owner gave up hope of finding it, despair loan effects acquisition, then the thief owns it, then the second uh, thief would have to pay twofold to the first thief. Bottom line. Okay. So the Gomorrah replies, and uh, we deal it. Okay. So Rava said, now R-A-V-A, not Rav, because we said that this does pose a difficulty. Rava said, but do you think that the Bryce is worded correctly? So Rava's solution to this, guys, is that the Bryce isn't worded correctly at all. Uh, because he said, you need to consider that which it states in the last case of the Bryce. What's that? I'm just going to repeat it so you don't have to remember. If you stole and then slaughtered the stolen animal and another thief came and stole the carcass from the first thief, the first thief pays the fourth or fivefold payment, but the second thief pays only the principal. Now, is there anyone who says that a physical change does not affect acquisition? Certainly not. Therefore, when the thief slaughtered the stolen animal, he has certainly acquired it through physical change. How can the Bryce then rule that the second thief is not liable to the twofold payment? Why? He's stolen the carcass from its new owner since the original owner despaired having achieved it. Rather, we must say that there's something wrong here. And therefore, the text of the Bryce has been corrupted. The entire Bryce refers to before the owner's original owner's despair. Okay? So 
And that's why the Bryson rules in the first case that when the second thief steals it from the first thief, he's exempt from the twofold payment because the first thief had not acquired it because the original uh, buyer uh, was, sorry, the original owner was hoping to get it back. So the, th uh, the second thief didn't steal it from the owner. The only time he kind of gave up hope is when it went to the buyer, the original owner really gave up hope. So he's saying that there's definitely some sort of corruption with the, uh, the, the, the trans translation, okay? Um, so that's why it indeed ref um, it refers to before the original owner's despair. And we must switch the ruling in the Bryce's last case to the middle case, the ruling in the middle case to the last case. In other words, switch it around. And you need to read the Bryce's last two cases as follows. If one stole, and then sold the stolen animal, and then another thief came and stole it from the buyer, the first thief pays the four or five-fold uh, payment, okay? But the second thief pays only the principal. And the reason being as follows, is that the original owner did not despair, okay? So that's why the first thief has to pay the four or five-fold payment, according to Rubber. Because it's not his animal is selling. The original owner didn't despair, Kevin. You're falling asleep now. Mm. You're falling asleep, but he? Okay, so what we... Kev, where did I lose you? That's a few seconds, that's it. All right, let me just... Repeat. You said the original owner, you said the original owner... Okay, so Robert's just saying it's corrupted the price, so we have to read it differently. So I am saying you need to read it is as follows, okay? If one stole and then sold the stolen animal and then another thief came and stole it from the buyer, the first thief pays the four or five-fold payment, but the second thief pays only the principal, okay? Why are you saying that? Because Rav is coming to the uh, defense of Rav because what he's saying is here, it has nothing to do uh, with the buyer acquiring it because the original owner never gave up hope of getting it. So therefore, there was no sale that really took place, no sale at all. And therefore, that is why uh, uh, the, the, that is why the second thief only pays back the principal because it doesn't become the new owner, uh, the new buyer's uh, product. So therefore, it's as if he stole it from for any other party. The second thief would only then pay the principal because he has to steal it. Sell it. The, the wording in the Chumash is he has to steal it from the man, meaning the man that originally bought it or the man that brought it. But what he's saying is, rather, is that this case is talking about that despair hasn't kicked in. Original owner hasn't given up hope of getting it back. Can you fall asleep again? Mm -hmm. Gav? I'm awake. Kevin's asleep. Yeah, yeah. You, you, shame. You don't realize, Kev, you're exhausted, mate. You've no, I was taking antihistamine earlier today. And shame, it might have you must have exha exhausted you, no problem. I still so, sleep. I didn't have enough sleep last night. That's fine. It's, okay, uh, so all he's saying maybe is, mostly awake. Okay. What you're saying is Rava is coming to the attention, uh, to the defense of Rav. And he's saying, listen, you're reading this all wrong. Despair hasn't occurred at this point. So that's why the first thief pays the four or five fold payment. Because if despair had kicked in and despair alone uh, does affect acquisition, then there would be no four or five fold payment by the first thief. He's selling what he owns, he's slaughtering what he owns. There's no problem with that. But the very fact that he's paying a four or five fold payment means the original owner hasn't despaired. And what's the proof? Is that you're switching the prices around and that you're actually saying the second only pays the principal. Why does he only pay the principal? Because when they started from the, the first thief, the original buyer, there's no sale that took place because the original owner did not despair. So therefore, that's not a proof that you need a change of location and despair to affect acquisition. A despair alone affects acquisition, but we're talking about here where the original owner didn't despair at all. Okay? It's a good argument that Rubber has in Rav's defense. Okay. Then he says, uh, for a change of domain without the original owner's despair does not affect acquisition. So the animal never belonged to the buyer, and the thief who stole it from them is therefore exempt from the careful payment because he didn't steal it from the owner. 
Okay, so that's very, very straightforward. So then he's saying, look, and if one stolen and slaughtered the stolen animal, and then another thief came and stole the carcass from the first thief. The first thief pays the four or five fold payment. Why? Um, and the second thief pays the two fold payment. Because the first thief had already acquired it through physical change. Now, I've got a question on that. I've got a question on that right away. In other words, he's trying to prove from there that the physical change is what causes the thief the second thief to pay uh, the penalty and as well uh, as well as the principal. Because through the physical change, now the first thief owns it, therefore the second thief has to pay uh, by, uh, the twofold penalty. But my argument is, he just used an example before of uh, 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 the fact that in this case, the second thief pays the twofold payment not because the owner despaired, but because of the physical change. That part of Rava's statement makes absolute sense to me. In other words, despair has an effect. Despair does affect acquisition, but the original owner hadn't despaired. But the physical change means that the second thief pays a twofold payment to the first thief. That makes sense. Where the argument doesn't make sense to me with Rava, and I'm not ready to uh, for Rava to tell me yet, let me wait to 120 for stating is that uh, why would the original owner, sorry, why would the thief pay the four or five-fold payment? Because on the physical change and slaughtering, he now owns the animal. And why can't he slaughter the animal that uh, is his? So that part I don't get. The second part of Rubber's argument makes sense while, uh, in the case of slaughtering, the physical change allows the second thief to pay a twofold penalty to the first thief. Fine, because of the physical dis um, change, not because the original owner despaired. But then, why would the first thief pay the four or five fold payment? Okay, so the Gemara is going to ask this question. It must do, because it's a question that came to my uh, mind, and I'm not that bright. So the Gemara rejects Rubber's insistence that the Bryce's text is necessarily corrupted, and then its ruling therefore must be reversed. Because Rav Papa has an answer, he's saying, actually, you don't have to switch the Bryce's ruling, because you can explain the Bryce exactly in its present form without switching it around. You can say that the Bryce's ruling in the last case, in other words, what's the last case? That the second thief who stole it after the first thief had slaughtered it is exempt from the twofold payment. Because uh, and and in what, why why because you um, you can basically say that it accords with the opinion of Beis Shammai who says that a stolen article that undergoes a physical change remains in its place. In other words, it remains the possession of the original owner and is not acquired by the thief. So what it's actually saying is. Is accordingly the first thief didn't acquire the carcass through the physical change effect by the slaughter. Even though we know that generally physical change affects ownership, uh, there is a principle that if you do uh, an avera, you don't actually own the animal. All it means is that you now can't give the animal back because it's uh, it's not in the original state. And instead of returning the animal, you now keep the animal and you have to pay cash. That's all that's changed. But you don't actually own the rights to, to claim damages on that animal because you stole it and slaughtered it. You're known as a bitch or sinner. Therefore, the second thief that stole it from him is not liable to the twofold payment. Makes sense, hey, guys? So, yeah. uh, so um, the Gemara asked, but if that's so, we do not have to switch the Bryce's rulings, then the Bryce refers to where the original owner had already despaired. Okay, so in other words, rather saying the original owner had not despaired. Here it's saying, if you don't have to switch it, we need to go back to where the original owner uh, had despaired, because prior to the owner's despair, the buyer would not acquire the stolen animal. In other words, if the original owner didn't give up, uh, there's no, you can't sell something that's not yours. Therefore, 
uh, to spend did not affect acquisition for the thief. So the thief can't sell what's not his, even though he physically owns it. He doesn't own the rights to it. He can't sell it. And therefore, if the if the buyer, uh, if, if there was a buyer that had the animal, the second thief would not be liable to the twofold payment because it's an illegal sale. It's illegal. The guy should have done his due diligence. So, um, the, the first and middle case therefore poses a... Uh, uh, Damon, you go back 30 seconds. You froze the picture and the audio. Okay. Just, right. just 30 seconds. Eh? All right. So oh, yeah, okay, okay. All right, so it's going back to the same question. And so Rav is talking about to Rav's defense, but we're still sitting with the same problem. And that problem is... How um, how do you have a twofold payment uh, when uh, uh, in other words, if despair affects acquisition, okay, then in that particular case, you've got a, a a problem because even though there's a twofold payment to the to the buyer, um, then why would the original owner pay for a four or fivefold payment? Because it's not his animal. Uh, his, if it is his animal is selling because the original owner despaired, why would he pay a four or five-fold payment to what he owns now through the original owner's despair? So even if it's a legal sale and the new buyer has it, and that's why the second thief pays twofold, there's either a problem because there's a four or five-fold payment. Okay. But either way, there's a problem. There seems to be an inconsistency. And the same two difficulties that Rav had before, Rav is not able to defend adequately, according to the Gemara. You get what I'm saying? In other words, guys, the same problem we had with uh, four is a, is a problem, which means the only reason that uh, uh, despair affected acquisition in this particular case is because... Uh, there was a change of location in addition um, uh, in addition to despair. Why? Because let's let's look at this again. When the second thief stole from the first thief, before Rather's reinterpretation, he only pays back the principal. Okay? Because even though the original owner despaired, if we want to say it's a case where he despaired, then it doesn't. Uh, then why doesn't the second thief pay a twofold payment to the first thief? Because when the original owner despaired, the thief now owns it. Okay. And then why, since the thief owns it through to through the despair, does he owe the four or fivefold payment to the original owner? And then why does the uh, second thief only pay the principal? Because it's saying that there's a problem, uh, and that problem is that. Firstly, he shouldn't pay the four or five-fold payment uh, because if the original owner despaired, he's, he's liable to sell it or do what it likes. It's his animal. And secondly, the very fact that the second thief only pays back the principal to the first thief means that he didn't really acquire it the first thief. Otherwise, he'd be eligible for the two-fold payment when the second thief started from him because the first thief acquired it through the original owner's despair. So these are the problems. So what it's saying is that the problem reasserts itself because the only time the second thief pays a two-fold payment is when the first thief, Gavin, uh, waited for the original owner to despair. And now and now he sells it to a buyer because if uh, despair affects acquisition, now it's the original thief's, and he sells it to the buyer. But the second thief now pays the two-fold payment because the buyer owns it. So both... Uh, despair affected acquisition only in conjunction with the change of domain. Okay? And then that proves that you need a change of domain as well. So these issues come up again uh, against Ruff. So we haven't resolved these issues. All right? So let, uh, let's just try and see if we've got, we've got still uh, another seven minutes. Okay, let's just please cover ground. Ruff Savit said, in fact, the entire Bryce refers to before the original owner's despair. So in other words, now, there's somebody else that's coming to the rescue of Ruff, and that's Rav Zavid. Okay? So do you understand how the flow is going? This is making a lot more sense to you guys, it should. So Rav came to the defense of Ruff, 
Now Rav Zaved is coming and defending that despair alone affects acquisition and you don't need a change of location uh, from the buyer, from the thief to the buyer, or to invoke. Because uh, um, that's why the second thief pays a twofold payment to the original buyer, not the first thief. Because despair with change of ownership affects acquisition, it would seem. So Rav has to answer that. So Rav, uh, so Rav has to answer that. Rav came to the defense, said brasses are corrupted, said no. Uh, now Rav Zavid's coming to an argument. He says, look, I'm here to defend uh, Rav. And he said, in fact, the entire Brasa refers to before the original owner's despair. Okay. And um, uh, basically, um, uh, if, um, <coughs> sorry, guys, sorry. So if, if it's referring to before the original owner's despair, the original owner hasn't given up yet. So what are we dealing with here in the middle case when it rules the second thief who stole the animal from the buyer's libel to the twofold payment? We are dealing with where the original owner despaired of recovering the stolen animal after it was in possession of the buyer, but the original owner did not despair while it was in possession of the first thief. Hence, the despair, uh, there was despair to effect acquisition. So that is, this is what it's basically saying, is that, look, while it was in the hands of the first thief, Kevin, the original owner was still hopeful that he'd get it back. He could sue the guy. He could work out what he was. The minute the first thief sold it to a buyer, his hopes of getting it back were dashed. And therefore, that despair affected acquisition for the buyer. It was done simultaneously. And therefore, despair alone affects acquisition in that case. That's why the second thief pays the twofold payment to the buyer. But in the case where the uh, second thief pays only the principal to the first thief, it's because the original owner hadn't despaired because it hadn't gone to a third party being the buyer. Get it? So it doesn't mean that you need a change of location in addition uh, to despair. Okay. So let's just see how long we've got. Just see the time. We've got a, a, a few minutes. Um, so uh, the Gemara anticipates a counter argument and rejects it. And do not say that on the contrary, the reason the Bryce gives the example of the second thief being liable to the twofold payment, only in its second case, when he stole the animal from the buyer, rather than its first case, when he stole the animal from the first thief, is that we need to spare in conjunction with the change of domain in order to affect acquisition. Rather, the Bryce can hold that even despair alone affects acquisition of the stolen article while it's still held by the thief. But the Bryson presents the case in which despair occurs after the animal was removed from the first thief's possession because you cannot find a case in which both of them, the first thief and the second thief, pay multiple penalties. The first thief, the four or five pulled, and the second thief, twofold, in, uh, other than in this way, where the original owner did not despair while the stolen animal was still in possession of the first thief. So what it's saying is here is that you have to have those three cases because what's actually going to happen is the question's going to arise. Okay, the spare effects acquisition, right? So therefore, the uh, why would, uh, if there was a, um, in other words, you could say that, yes, there's if the spare effect acquisition, it's fine to turn around and say, that the second thief would technically owe the first thief uh, the twofold payment. Okay, because the because uh, now the first thief owns it. But then why would the first thief have to pay the four or fivefold payment to the original owner since he owns it because despair has taken place? So because of that contradiction, it's not that you need a change of location, it's that you have to separate the cases in order that you can see that right, there's a four or five fold payment for the original theft once he sold it. After he sold it to the buyer, at that point, the original owner gave up hope of getting it when he heard through the grapevine it happened. And therefore the uh, transaction didn't revoke. And what happened is months later, um, um, uh, 
a second thief stolen from the buyer at which despair affected acquisition, but the original thief didn't get off the hook of the full file full payment because at the time where the first thief stole it, Gavin, the original owner thought he'd get it back. It's only when he heard from the grapevine it was sold uh, that even though it was an illegal sale, he gave up hope them and said in, he said to his friend that everybody heard it, well, I'm never going to get it back now. And then in that particular case, before they could go to court, somebody was witnessing and say, yes, he did despair. So it becomes the, the first buyer's legitimacy. Months later, there was another case where a second thief stole it from the buyer. And if we owe the twofold payment, simply because the buyer, through the original owner's despair, did effect uh, acquisition, but uh, there wasn't despair at the time when the original thief stole it. And therefore, that's why it pays the full fivefold payment. That's why you have to separate the cases. Otherwise, you would have to say that despair in conjunction with uh, domain uh, would affect acquisition. And this is proving that despair without a change of domain on its own can affect acquisition. That's why we needed the three separate cases. I hope I explained it well. Yeah. Very good. OK. Thank um, you, Dan. Did this help? Did this last session help, Art? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think it cleared up a lot of issues. I read it again and, yeah. and again. And, and it's a really good summary. And if anybody, uh, Kevin, if you didn't get all of it, just rewatch this. It will give you clarity on the whole week. Um, it's a summary for the whole week. And it's a, and it's a, it gives you the flow. It does. It makes it easier. Yeah.